everyone. Welcome back to Not Just Real Estate here. I am here with Lindsay Foster from Foster Living and myself, Rob Golfi, with the Golfi team. And uh, we talk about everything uh, and anything. And uh, so, Lindsay, Sir. what's happening this week? Oh, what is ha what's happening last week? I got an office, Rob. I heard, I heard. I'm so freaking So, excited. you know what? Okay, now, I heard it's on Ottawa Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, which one is it? Like, is it, it's not, is it the, is, is it the corner property? No. No. Oh, my gosh, because they want a million dollars and commercial mortgages are at 10%. Oh, and yeah, you're right. And it's gutted. So, the math to put that back together. No, we rented a space. Nice. So, it's interesting. Three weeks ago, I door knocked, which is like my least favorite thing to do on ottawa street on ottawa street and i had a, a multi-level pitch if you own this place and you're sick of it i might be interested in buying it realistically i can't i don't have money or credit i can't buy <laughs> fuck all right now um secondly if you are renting this space and your lease is coming do let your landlord know that i'm a viable yeah, candidate yeah. and third was for some of the newer businesses if you're not finding the success you were hoping for i would love to sublet this space and i spoke to a lady who was running a market style store and it seemed pretty niche and she couldn't pay her March rent and she left in the middle of the night. And I dropped my kid off. Uh, they do drama at Rivers and Meadows on mm -hmm. Ottawa Street. Yeah. I dropped them off. I went for a walk. I saw the for lease sign in the window. Boom. DeSantis family, angels. Oh, um, yeah. I called them no less than seven times in 20 minutes. And wow. Scott was like, they're not going to lease this to you. You look like a psychopath. Yeah. Uh, we met them Friday morning and they gave us the keys. Nice. So, so uh, what? you got a lot of renovations to do? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not unreasonably so. We've seen some places on Ottawa that don't have plumbing. So like we're a step ahead of that. Um, but it's ugly and I'm making it my own. So they're uh, awesome. Awesome. You know what? I'm going to tell you something about Please. Ottawa street. I love Ottawa street and Ottawa street in five to 10 years, you will not be able to afford to buy real estate on that street. I, I I'm telling you right now, I I'm looking and, um, right now I can't do anything cause I got two major renovations going on. Mm -hmm. I just finished one and, uh, I, uh, but otherwise Ottawa street is going to be, a, it, it's a diamond in the rough and in 10 years from now, it is going to be like an in place to hang to, 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 to So I think Ottawa street to me, it was well, good like, call. If you're it was not a, a Hamilton native, that means nothing. Yeah. But our city really only has like three strong business yeah. corridors. Yeah. And two of them are really West yeah. End, which yeah. isn't where my market yeah. share is. Yeah. So um, I think this is a good decision. Um, I hope that I don't bankrupt my family. I'm super excited to decorate. I'm on Facebook Marketplace like my life depends on it because I have a very specific taste. Yeah. It is um, everything your Nona owned. Oh, yeah. That's Perfect. That's, that's my deal. Nice. Um, and I think like within three weeks, I'll be inviting you over to come take awesome. a Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. You know what? It, 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 it makes you work harder. Now you got a place and you can meet people. You can have, you know, small little events and it, it's... You're you're gonna you're gonna really uh, really uh, enjoy and appreciate that. That's every so. that's that's the direction. P teams are are setting up shops and and they're making uh, their own little sub kind of brokerage thing going on. So congratulations! Thank I you. think that, thank that's you. awesome. It's, thank you. It's the minimum standard of care thing too. Yeah. Right? Like you gotta get up out of your house and go to work. Yeah. It really changes the spectrum. So. I can't work at home. No. There's no way I I can't work at home. You know, uh, a couple of reasons I can't work at home. One is um the tv's too close mm -hmm. two the refrigerator's too close and three uh my wife's at home and she'll li listen to the conversation and then she's gonna tell me <laughs> oh you should have said this you should critique this why are you letting those people talk to you like that why it's like right? you know what i mean and i'm like like so it, it uh well, and you couldn't hold a golfy team meeting in your dining room no, no no and i i can't work out of my i'm 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 in an atmosphere where I am too comfortable and I end up f f feeling uh, uh, dozy and feeling tired. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, like I need to nap when I'm at home. When I'm away, I can, I can, like, I'm here usually between 5.30 and 6 at my office. You okay. said you're here bouncing I'm, early. I am here. Like, I mean, I, like, so uh, when I'm here... I can go all day and all night as long as I'm not in my house. Because if I'm in my house, I am looking at that couch and I'm thinking this would be a perfect time for a nap. Mm -hmm. And but right, but I can go all day and all night with as long as I'm not in my comfort zone, I'm good. And I and and I do hate being at home because um, the comfort zone's there, and I want to go for a nap. And I just I'm I'm tired of that. My goal is not 
to spend that much time at home, which just because I just don't want to, you know, if I want to, if I want to run, no, I'm productive. I don't want to just, I don't want to be a couch potato either. I just, mm. you know, I just want to enjoy that, doing That's things. a misogyny for you. Cause my issue isn't couch potato. It's that the fucking dishwasher's beeping and there's laundry going and there's, and mm. I find myself doing menial non-money making tasks. Right. You're going to do that in between your phone calls. And I should be doing it at 10 o'clock at night yeah. when I'm not in the middle of yeah. work. So getting out of the house, also just like putting on hard pants. You're bound to be a better salesperson if you have shoes on like you are surprise, right? You are. So. Yeah. <laughs> look at uh, Kevin O'Leary. He's always on. Uh, he's always on uh, interviews with his uh, boxers on, and uh, and he's got a tie, suit and suit and shirt and, t- and tie on, but he's got no pants on. Well, if we had that money, neither would we, right? Yeah. No kidding. Speaking of proximity to your yeah. fridge, I heard something very interesting mm-hmm. that you were trying a new diet. Yes, I did do it. So I got. I, I so start I start at the beginning. What was so, it? So so I've done you know everything you know try to do like you know. Uh, all these different diets and stuff like that. And it, and it's hard. I, I just needed to lose, <clears throat> lose about five to eight pounds, maybe 10. But so I went on a carnivore diet. So you can eat anything, animal products, right? Steak, uh, bacon, eggs, uh, dairy? chicken, dairy, okay. anything animal. So I went on and I did it for about just under a month. And I did drop some weight. People go, Hey, you lose some weight, lose some weight. And I go, yeah, yeah. And so I've been off of it for about maybe 10 days now, okay. but my craving for bread is not there. My craving for, like, I'll have the odd mashed potatoes, but, like, I'm not, like, if I go to a restaurant, I love French fries. If I knew I was dying, uh, like, in, like, six months, I'd be at French fries everywhere. I would eat French fries. I love potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. I love French fries. I love, I love bread. I would freaking eat all of it. So is the diet no carb? The, well, the carnivore diet is no carbs. It's just str- no vegetables, nothing. No I was, vegetables? No, just d- literally meat, animal products. Animal products. That's it. Just that. And you've, and I'm telling you, I, I, like, I, I dropped. Uh, a size in, in my pants. Now I've been off of it. Like I haven't, like I'm still, still now I'm kind of dropping weight too. I think I'm still dropping weight. And, um, and the, what's the easiest thing? Bacon, eggs, meat, chicken, steak, freaking, I'm eating every, anything to do with, you know, that turkey. I can eat anything mm-hmm. when it comes to animal products. So I did that. And now I, I just, I feel good. And I have no craving for some reason, something took that craving away in my body. Now, I, I, I do have, like, I had a little piece of bread la- on Friday, which was three days ago, and I haven't had any, any other carbs besides that. Now, when I have eggs, I just have eggs. I don't have bread with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have, I don't, uh, yeah, I just don't. Uh, I have never heard a diet in the world that says don't eat vegetables for 30 days. That's super Yeah, crazy. no vegetables. Um, no, n- nothing with sugar in it. I just, I'm telling you, I'm clean. Like, I'm, I'm good. And uh, now, now I'm back. Like, I eat vegetables now. I eat, uh, um, but I'm just not eating, uh, you know, carbs and no, no carbs. I'll have the odd little one, like just, but just like a little taste. Nothing, nothing uh, crazy. Tell me about dieting in your house. Like, does your wife go on your diet? Do you cook separate no, meals no. then? No, I'm, no. I'm, I'm more d- disciplined, uh, I think, on diets. Um, um um, I'm more like, yeah, no, I just like, she like knows what I'm like. Lo- Does she make two dinners when you're on the diet well, like this? No, she'll have it. But like, let's say if we're having chicken, she'll have, we'll have chicken with the, and she'll have the chicken and vegetables. And sure. I just have the chicken mm-hmm. and, um, you know I mean? Like, uh, yeah. And in the mor- morning, if it's breakfast, I love bacon and eggs, man. I'm like, um, lunch and you know, it could be like, I'll, I'll have a steak. Like I, you know, I steak at least a couple times a week, chicken a couple times a week. Um, yeah, I just, you know, just everything. It, it was good. It was good. I feel good. You know what? And if I feel like I'm going off track, mm-hmm. I'll go back on that maybe for a week or two just to, you know, but I don't have a, like, I'm, and I'm, I'm sticking to it and, and you know, I'm do, like, I love my big sandwiches. Okay. I'm Italian. I grew up with immigrant parents and our, my, uh, like, I mean, I grew up with, you know, veal parm sandwiches and you know what I mean? Like That's I'm telling Scott lives for oh, I'm no, telling ciabatta. Oh my God. Like I, I grew up like, you know, like mm-hmm. I grew up with like, and so that, so that crate, because you grew up with that as a kid, that craving, 
of having that mm -hmm. is huge. Like it's, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, but right now it's not there. Now there was a store up on the Hamilton mountain that made one of the best veal parm sandwiches that you could ever have. The guy, apparently the guy just closed up out of nowhere and he said he retired. So I don't know what the heck happened there. And, uh, you know, usually when people retire, they tell you a couple of months in advance. Yeah. You got to head yeah, up. Yeah. So, but, but anyway, I miss that store, but I'm glad it's not there. Cause that, because I used to go up there at least maybe once every week or something like that. Go and you nice. just put too much back. I won't no. eat veal. You couldn't sell me on veal for like ethical reasons. Yeah. But I'll do a chicken parm like my life depends on oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's what I got for the boys. We're getting the office ready and we're next to Simply Italian Bakery. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Like, what do you want there? They have a... They have a Fresh on the spot, cannoli filling oh. station, pizza oven. But I got the boys chicken parms. Yeah. And like when they took them out, it's the so, size of a small baby. So they're, they're going to get to know you there. Yeah. I don't know if I can afford it. Things are things. It's it's a nice place to go. But for a quick lunch, it was, it yeah. was lovely. Yeah. But see, dieting is tough in our house. Scott, Scott and I have both lost a human worth of weight off no of our kidding. bodies. No kidding. And we both did it very differently. But Scott is a faster, um, which makes it really hard to like run your household because it's like, Sorry, kids. Daddy isn't having dinner tonight or the next three so, nights. Oh, so he's doing. He does. He does like the three, four day fasts and stuff like well, that. Well, he, he does all kinds of things. He intermittent fasts almost exclusively. Yeah, yeah. And then when he needs to high gear it, he'll do longer term fasts. But Scott's a type one diabetic, so he. So he's got to watch. He's putting yeah. insulin in his own body, and you'd think that regimented eating would be more helpful, but because of those new. Um, what does he wear? The, the what, blood automatic glucose they, monitor? They can check that, yeah. You can see what, that your blood is actually just perfectly fine yeah, and he can go. Yeah. So he probably lost, oh, 150 pounds wow. in three years. Wow. Um, well, it's good that it took him three years, not like, it wasn't like six overnight. months. Yeah, because otherwise it, it, that's not healthy. But um, it's lifestyle change too, yeah. but good for you. That's but I, I did the inter I, but I also did intermittent fasting while I was doing the carnivore except because I wouldn't eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd be eating lunch and dinner. So you go like 16 hour fast. Yeah. With the carnivore. And, 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 and I, and I dropped, I dropped weight like, and I was hovering about 205 pounds, 203 pounds. Now I'm, I'm, I'm hovering about 197 pounds, 190. My, my goal weight is is to get to about 195 pounds, 100, between 190, 195, and try to keep the maximum 190. But I did lose uh, an inch off my waist. I was at 34 waist, now I'm at 33. Like mm -hmm. I, I buy clothes at 33 waist, which, you know, which is, which is, I feel great. Like, you know what I mean? And they're fitting me. It's not like I, like, and I bought these pants uh, probably like two weeks ago, and, and I put the first pair on it fit like nice fit and perfectly. easy like did, you know, and you're a cardio boy right uh, yes and i haven't been doing any cardio for the last week and a half just because i've been so busy but mm. the, but yeah i i do cardio like i'll, I'll Can do you do your cardio fasted or do you feel like you're gonna die what do, you, what do you mean? Oh, like if you if you're on a 16 hour fast, can you go and do your cardio yeah. regimen without having your lunch first? You're not, not gonna a, pass. Not out. a problem. No, not a problem. Like if I if I was like for me to do the workout, I can't do my workouts in the morning just because of the fact I'm, too, I'm thinking about business too much. Mm -hmm. So and that's why I'm here between, you know, five thirty and six. So but when um, so I'll, I just had so just for for lunch, I just had, I think, three or four hard boiled eggs that, that that's my lunch for today that's not 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 bad I did you bring a gas mask under my chair did you just eat four hard boiled eggs and then come sit up here and do this interview you're gonna blow us out of this place what do you mean you're gonna get gas rob i don't get gas oh, i'm telling you're you a machine, i got a garbage man. stomach i got garbage stomach I, my stomach uh bre breaks it down to nothing you can Stop. i can eat a whole can of beans and you'll be i'd be no problem oh my god if i looked at a hard boiled egg i'd be bloated in yeah a no no i'm like I, I mix it with olive oil, put some salt and make, make it gour gourmet olive oil. Yeah. No, listen, I got garbage to me. You, you know what? If I can have a can of beans here, not a problem. And you, <laughs> you wouldn't have to worry about a thing with me. Well, I'd be, I'd be worried for myself. That's it. Yeah. No, but, but, but yeah. So there, I tried to, you know, I was trying different things and I know there's a lot of other ones out there. That, there's a gazillion and 12, yeah. like you could take any diet in the yeah. whole world, but Okay. Um, have you done any cool listing appointments lately? Anything? New? Yeah. So I saw, um, in, uh, so I grew up with this family around the corner and there was like six kids and between the six kids, none of them were the same grade as me. They was either older or younger, but we knew them, you know, like, you know, how, you know, sure. you know people in the neighborhood. So I get a phone call and, uh, they want to list their, uh, mom's house. And I, I saw the guy, he hasn't changed. It's just like, looks identical. 
like okay. identical and you know just you know a little thicker but I, and uh his name was frank i go frank you haven't changed one bit i says it's like like you could literally like if you took a picture if i took if i saw a picture of you like 10 years old and picture now it's like teachers would recognize you like, you know what I mean? I don't know if anybody would recognize me, but like, you know, from 10 years old to today. Mm -hmm. um, but this guy looks identical. And, uh, but yeah, no, so we're listing, uh, listing his mother's house and his, uh, and his sister is kind of the, like the person that, uh, that is kind of running the show. Sure. Uh, she's like the president of some big hospital in Albany, New York. Oh, cool. And so she lives there uh, four days a week. She lives in Canada three days a week. And so, like, so this is like, like, like. The jet setter. No That's shit. Really no. Can you imagine how much she gets paid? Yeah, to she run must, back and forth. To, well, not that, but, but think about how much. What is a salary of a president of a hospital in the United States? What's that? That's got to be a million plus. Yeah, it's got to be cr in US dollars at that. No, sh no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. You can say shit here, yeah. Rob. It's your yeah. show. Yeah, but no kidding, no kidding. <laughs> but um, reasonable people, happy listing appointment. Yeah, nice yeah, it's good. Old yeah, friend. got that. You know, uh, old old school and stuff like that. I got a cool one. We're gonna test the market on. Okay. So like, um, condo building, right? Yeah. All seniors, all the time. Yeah. And nobody's renovated. Okay. Oh wow. And they are consistently four fifty. Well, this morning I walk into one. They've renovated the whole damn thing. Oh, shit. But here's the question, and we're going to find out next week. Do 70-year-old women care? So, realistically, this unit should be worth about $50,000 more yeah. than all the comps. Yeah. But... Is anybody willing to pay is that? Is anyone willing to pay for what this person's done? So, I think yes. I think it's pretty yeah. spectacular. Yeah. Um, and I love a freaking condo. Like, if I didn't have these kids yeah. and, and the dogs yeah. and shit, give me the 11th floor and two yeah. parking spaces. Yeah. I'll be a pig and shit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we'll see if people value the differential, but it's hard I, to deny. I, I'm sure. Like, you know what? Walking into a fully updated condo mm -hmm. in, in a senior building, damn right. I, I'd be all over that. If Especially I was, if you're in your house and you've done renovations yeah. and, you're, and you need to downsize. Yeah. You don't want teal carpet, yeah. right? So we'll It's see. funny how fast a house gets dated in, within 10 years. Like, you, like I, I'm looking at my house, and it was renovated in 2016. Okay. Okay, we're 2024. Yes. We're eight years in. And you think it's over? Um, I think it, need, it, it, it needs a new color. It needs, the kitchen is getting a little bit tough, um, but the, we have a white kitchen, but that's not what's in right now. What's in is the Euro flat kitchen. Mm -hmm. How long is that going to stay? It's like, tricky. You know what I mean? Like, like the white, so I got, did I get the tail end of the white kitchens or did I, or was I on track with it? Or it's like, is white always neutral and timeless and it's, but it's the doors. It's the doors of the kitchen doors. And the style of it. Yeah, the style. So, I mean, I mean, switching out a, a one kitchen for another, if you do, if you do the same plan, it's. I think it's easy. Yeah, you can just switch your doors. Yeah, even. that's all. We had that. We have um, a mantle in our in our back room, our TV room, and you know the wood slat wall is very mid century. It's very yeah. in and. So Scott started putting the slats up, and by the time he was done, it was, it maybe took him a week to do. I walked in and I was like. It looks like the fucking entrance to a Kelsey's. And I was like, shoot, this is yeah. done already. Like, it's yeah. been commercialized, and now it's up on the wall in my house. There so you like, go. we're stuck with it. Yeah. But it ebbs and flows. Question to ask you. Hit me. Would you move yes. to a remote area? No. If you knew you... <laughs> already, ah! already. To a remote area, if you knew you, uh, the city would give you a, a, a lot for a dollar... What is this, like 1880 settlers? Like, come yeah, no on. kidding. Yeah. No kidding. So that's what they're doing right now. Where? So, um, like Manitoba, okay. uh, Cochrane, Ontario, okay, um, in Saskatchewan, mostly in Manitoba. They because what's happening in these little communities, mm -hmm. um, like think about it. You grow up in this little town, you know, maybe there might be a thousand people the most, and you're a kid. And you're thinking, there's no freaking way I'm gonna stay in this town. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, what, what, what are the, what are, what are the, like, you know, options of, you know, meeting, a, like, a guy or a girl, whatever, you know, if you're, a, if you're your a guy, person. like, what yeah. are the options for girls to, to hook up with a, a chick? Like, it's not like you get a choice to, it's not, there's no dating game there, that's for sure. Okay. Because like, there's only maybe one or two of the same age as you. Yeah. So, and it's probably your cousin. So. <laughs> this is a problem. So you're in rural Manitoba. So no, 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 they're trying to draw people okay. into these remote areas and they're saying, you come here, we're going to give you the lot for a dollar, but you got to build a house and you got to move here. Now I get it. 
housing is expensive mm -hmm. and somebody like uh, a millennial or uh, gen x may say listen let's go out there and move there because they can work remotely but i don't think i would want to raise a kid in a remote area like that yeah i well i don't i like living in the city yeah. i mean for christ's sakes i live in rosedale it's yeah, suburban hamilton that and, that's, suburban. and that's not city enough no. for me i wish we were no. back at barton and victoria which always blows people's minds but and it's and it's always in these areas where it's cold like well, it's cold there not like like it's cold here so we get maybe four months out of the year or maybe four and a half months out of the year less and less, like like but, like, mm -hmm. like like we get like summer, like we might get two and a half, three, three months if we're lucky, three months if we're lucky yep. of hot weather, if we're lucky, three months. Sure, but, but between those places there, it's are like, flat. That's why they like, get that wind. Oh my god! Through. Like I, there's no way I, I could. Those guys are are sitting or living in weather that's probably nine to ten months cold out of the year. Mm -hmm. Like there's no way I, I don't think I could do it. So like, would I move to Manitoba if if I liquidate or Cochrane, 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 Ontario? It's about four hour drive from here. Yeah. So I, I mean, no, I no, maybe two and a half hour. Drive I liquidate from here. everything I own. I take all of my cash. You move up there. I go up there. I get this land for a dollar. You got to build a house. Thing, well, the first thing that comes to mind is who the hell's building the house. Well, and how does that affect? You'll probably that find local somebody economy. up there to build it. It probably yeah. take a long time. But you 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 build a house. You move up there, I and then uh, and then. You sell the other four houses in your neighborhood? Doesn't sound like a good game no. for realtors. No, I don't know if I would do it. I, I don't it, know. It, yeah, it's not a forget about being yeah, a real estate you can't agent. Because be obviously they can't get people there. Well, and so many people in the last six months have been called back to office from the work from home positions right. they were given over yeah. COVID. So, I mean, I guess at this point, if you knew you were work from home forever, it could be an interesting opportunity. I mean, I've seen those things in Europe. If you had to said, it, would you like to Italy. move to France for a dollar? No, I'd well, say yes. Well, but. no, no. Okay, so I'll give you a perfect example. So, my dad dad's little town okay. right um when he left it, it was a, a village about 700 people right and there was another little town beside it, another and it was a city and i'm not sure there's probably thousands there okay. so when he left uh a lot of the people in the 50s 60s and 70s left where where he was so when he came back in the 70s um he sold the family house for uh for um my uh my grandparents right he says oh because he was the first one to go back to italy after everybody immigrated he went there sold the place now um there's only 100 people living in this town wow. there's only 100 you could see like so they're offering people to buy at a very cheap price and hopefully they renovate and you know make, like i mean no like nobody's gonna move there 100 percent, right mm -hmm. like it's tough like you know unless the next town comes over you got a house and you can get a house cheap there and you just got to rent it, fix it and renovate it. And is there it. industry? Are there jobs? There's, well, maybe in the, in, in the, the town next to it or maybe there. remotely around there. Mm -hmm. But, um, but that's what they need to do because people are leaving. Like, like think about it. If you, you, your kids, you, you send them, you bring, you go to a remote area and they say, sorry, mom, sorry, dad. I know you like it out here, but I'm freaking get, can't wait to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out of here. And that's what they did in Sicily. That's what they did in Southern Italy. They, uh, because everything was more towards the, the north where all the, you know, Rome and Milan and all those major cities are. Mm -hmm. And that's where the young kids are going. So young, so there's no population growth. They're declining in these uh, small areas, especially in, in the, in, especially in Sicily, where these little villages, there's the only people that own them are people that left. And maybe they might show up once every five years just to see how their Make property's sure doing. But, and, and, they're, and it's worth nothing. Yeah. It's worth nothing that, but like it, it, that would never happen in Ontario. No, no, not like not, not in Southern Ontario. That would not happen in Vancouver. But when you go to Northern remote areas where it's cold and hardly any gas stations up there. And, and iceberg lettuce is $17. That's right. And there's like yeah. a huge host. Of, oh yeah. 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 I can see that. No, definitely not for me, but I no. mean, I'm not a boonies girl either. No, no. Um, I like I, to be close to some kind of civilization if I need to. Yeah, well, I'm also like a skeptic. So like, what are the strings? Like, okay, it's no a dollar. Strings. Worth, yeah, but like, is it service? Now you're paying for it. No, no, they might, no, 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 no. You probably have to get septic in a s s septic system. Bring uh, your own electric in. Like yeah, you need yeah, to do. yeah. They probably have that, but it, it's just... It's just that you, they just, they need to grow the town because mm -hmm. the mayor is going to be out of a job soon if he doesn't start bringing population in there because they don't need them. Cause, sure. You know, but is dollar land like enough to bring people in be, or do yeah, they have I building think so. services ready to go? They get, they're, they're, they're getting, 
a ton of calls. They're lining the shit up. There are people are looking for a place to move to. And uh, if they buy a, a lot for a dollar and build a house on it and live there, mm -hmm. all the power to them. I know a family that just had their second baby. They live in downtown Toronto in a one bedroom. So I can see there are some candidates yeah. if they weren't required to be exactly where they were that would yeah. love that opportunity. But yeah. um, no, that's not for me. No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't do I've it. I've also never built a house. Have you ever built a house foundation I, up? I, I, I would never attempt to. I would probably hire a contractor, mm -hmm. somebody that I, I can trust. Yeah, I couldn't GC yeah. a project. No that way, scale. no way. That would hurt your business. Yeah, that that definitely would hurt your business. So I've got two projects on the go right now. I got a GC for each one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, I I rarely ha have to go there. I, and, you know, they call me that this, I take a look at it, you know, see what's going on. Answer their questions. Yeah, answer yeah. questions and everything. I was just on the phone this morning with them, uh, figuring out what, what how our doors are going to be for all the offices and stuff Is like that. Is this another office? Yeah, I got, I got a St. Catharines office opening up. Oh, that's so and exciting. Then, and, then, and then I got a, a big one in, in Grimsby opening up. And Burlington yeah. is done, operational. Bur uh, inside, it is complete. Done, done, done. You, I got, you got, I got to have you over there and yeah, check I it out. Come see. Yeah. Tell me about property management. Does that require its oh. own office? So we're, we're, we're opening up. We are, You're doing it. Yeah. Golfy property management. That's so we're doing great. that. So if anybody wants us to manage their properties, uh, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the process of uh, acquiring another property management company that we're going to flip over. And it's going to be called uh, Golfy Property Management. Uh, but yeah. And I've owned properties all my life. Okay. My entire adult life since the day I turned 20. I've owned how, uh, properties since then. So I know the shit that goes on. I know uh, what needs to be done. So, um, and I've got uh, Stephanie, my personal assistant, she's spearheading everything. Like she's just amazing. And um, so she is uh, basically getting everything ro rolling with the website, with, um, and she's helping me with the negotiations and, and uh, the contracts and uh, just everything about it and uh and and also the system that runs it mm -hmm. like there's you know so she, uh, she's been learning and, and and taking in that and so she's been amazing on that i couldn't do it without her mm -hmm. because like i've uh, this has been on my mind for about five years but i needed the right person to work with me on this and and uh, stephanie my personal assistant was the right person to do that so i just hope nobody knows her last name because i don't want them to steal to her from me her, talk yeah. to me about logistics for a minute like when I think property management, I think like multi-residential, like yeah. eight, eight plus unit yeah. buildings. Do you think that like general landlords who own single family homes, yeah. they're, they're good opportunities they, they, for property they need, management? That, yeah, those are, those are perfect. Um, you know why? Because you need to change the smoke detectors every year. Most landlords that are self, they self-manage, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that. But when you have a, a, guy, like a, a maintenance guy that works full time, that's his job. Every mm -hmm. year, it's on the system. Here's your job this week. You got to get all these smoke detectors changed. Got to get the, uh, the tenant to sign that that they under they it's been changed. If they take the batteries out themselves, it's on the onus on yeah. them. You know, so that we covered our our tracks. And like just to like educate the consumer base, normally property managers are paid a percentage of the rental. That's monthly, right. Yeah, and it, and it works from seven to uh, ten percent. Uh, and services like that are wrapped into what you're paying to have well, property yeah, management. Yeah. So let's say let's say there's a plumbing issue. Mm -hmm. So we'd get the plumber, we would manage it and get it done, and then and then the land, the, the land, landlord would have to pay the plumbing mm -hmm. bill and stuff like that. That's interesting because I know a lot of folks who started their investment portfolios and then got the hell out of dodge so i've yeah. got investors who own single family homes up to triplexes but then left for bc yeah. and you're running like me there at any moment any one of five toilets could back yeah. up right? yeah what the oh, hell yeah. are you going to do from across the country so yeah no I, you just get a property management company i mean like if there's a a, a toilet backed up just get a plunger right? you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah that but most people don't No, they don't That's, know that this is a tenant issue like when you move these people into your house they don't own a house they don't take I, care I, of it the I, same way i gotta tell you a story so this is here in Hamilton. So it's uh, a commercial uh, unit on the main floor in residential upstairs. Okay. It's vacant. That, that this, un this unit's vacant, but the unit across the hall is full. So um, one day they go in and they find out there's no key in the lockbox. So the agent calls the last agent there and says no no i you know i we, we've um yep no the, we left the key and everything in like that and uh so they go what the hell's going on so anyway then they find a a, a day or or a day later the keys in the lockbox they open it up it's in there what the hell's going on 
So anyway, they go up in there. Somebody's been squatting in there. And so here, this and is... And they had the code. And they were like, they, had the they code didn't because, break in. They no, they had the code the because key. the idiot agent that showed that didn't house... Scramble didn't, didn't scramble it. Didn't scramble it. He didn't scramble it. What a... <laughs> What an idiot. What a piece of shit. So I know. So you know what? It, 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 hopefully it's going to happen to him one day where somebody's going to get in. So anyway, so somebody's been staying in there. So they've been, I'm not sure how long they've been in there. So um, they've been using the toilet and the water's been shut off for that unit. And I'm telling you, they've been like shitting. Using the toilet. They've been shitting in this toilet. Can of beans, four yeah. hard boiled eggs quality. I, I it, Like how much oh two people... Can how many how much can two people of shit acquire in a toilet? <laughs> like no, I'm telling you. So so anyway, so they've been shitting in this toilet, and the the, the so what do we what what does the agent do? So the the agent, I wouldn't even know what to do. I turn the so, water on. So, well, you can't flush this because there's like there's so much. It's it's so much shit. So so he had to. So he went in. The agent went in. This is how good our agents are. I'm not gonna say who it is. So the agent went in and got a shovel, and but but what he did was he put plastic over the shovel because he wanted to keep the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> so and he shoveled shit into a bag. The things we do for money. I know. So he shoveled shit into a bag. They turned the water on, got it cleaned up. It's still a little bit clogged, and um, so I asked him. I go when. This is on a like on a street like Barton Street or something like this, and I said, so when you went out of the out of the unit with the bag of shit, mm. right? Did people think you had like a big dog <laughs> walking with a bag of shit? Could have walked around and asked, who does this belong yeah. to? Can you this imagine? Yours? Can you ma- but I have to give credit to the agent that yeah. went there and cleaned it up. He cleaned it up, and we, we uh, changed the lockbox code because obviously these people were coming and going in there. Uh, and uh, using the lockbox code. So the lockbox code's cleaned up, got the water running. And is this building for sale? I'm not going to say. Or is it for lease? That's why I'm asking. Uh, it's it's for sale. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. it's for sale. There's more at stake in that case. Yeah. So you really yeah. want to so sure anyway, it's accessible. Yeah, so anyway, so that, that that's, you know what, good for him he did that. Some agents, I'll tell you, would have said, I'm um, canceling this yeah, thing. You could get somebody it. else to deal with this. And, uh, you know. Uh, well, and especially with our investor clients, like you could be making that call, but that person's in PEI at their house, yeah. right? Like these people aren't necessarily local. Mm. So if you're not going to do that, then but who yeah, else is? Oh, yeah. The shit that we go through. The, go through. Oh, yeah. No Literally. kidding. I remember one time I go visit a guy. He's outside in, his, uh, in, in, the, in the yard and he had a dog. And uh, he saw me coming, so he, and he had a bag of shit in his hand because he just cleaned up after his dog. Okay. So anyway, he puts it in his pocket. So I'm sitting outside in the picnic table, and he's smelling shit. Did I tell this story before? Never. He is smelling shit. He's going, he's looking at me like I smell like shit. Okay. He's looking at me. And I'm like, what's the problem? He goes, Do you, like, you got, sh- like, like you, I'm smelling shit. And I go, and then he, and then after he realized, he put the bag of shit in his pocket. He didn't tie the oh the bag. God. He didn't tie the bag up, so the odor was right by where he was and floating towards his nose Jesus right there the whole time. And he's thinking, "I'm I smell like shit." And meanwhile, it's his dog shit that he he forgot that he put the bag of sh- bag of shit in his pocket. Don't put dog shit in your pocket. Well, That's like a I mean, rule of thumb. Well, it was in plastic, but he didn't tie it. He yeah. didn't knot it up to you know to kill the to kill the odor. And he was and looking, he was at, looking at you. He was looking at me like I smelled like crap. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It wasn't and then me. and then he and then he realized after, and he felt he was embarrassed. Eh? But can you imagine you have a bag of shit in your pocket, and you're sitting there, and his and you know the odor just floats around in front of your face. Oh. And yeah. It, oh yeah. Like well, this oh, yeah. is the benefit to living in a neighborhood where there's always construction. Because when I walk oh, the dog yeah. and I fill the bag, there's always a dumpster. And oh, I yeah. know within a block there's somewhere that I can uh, flick uh, it I, into. I, I'm going to tell you every realtor has some shit story. <laughs> I'm telling you that. The, I've got I've got a bunch of shit stories. Well, and like it doesn't matter what you do, you can duct tape a toilet lid down oh, and they put won't. water is yeah. turned off, and yeah. people will rip it apart. Oh yeah, they will because they have, they're in the they gotta go. They gotta they go. go. Right, 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 Sometimes right. you got to put a sign on the front door. Toy, water is shut off. Do not. Temp- yeah, and even then, I've had yeah. people do. Holes. And some people think they got there's one flush left that they can get away with it. That is a trick, though. There is yeah. one, usually, unless yeah. of course, yeah, I was there first and needed to use the water. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Jeez the second up. person's out. There's hey, out. Your next note is really funny to me. My what? Your next note on our board. Oh, what's that? It's asking about how banks might recognize influencers for yeah. mortgages. Well, yeah, like I guess I mean. 
like, what do you say on your resume? I'm an influencer? Well, I Like, mean, I'm sure strippers have a hard enough time. Okay, well, that's why it's interesting to me. Because, like, money is money, and a two-year that's average right. is a two-year average. And if you do your taxes, doesn't matter where it comes from. The government agrees with it. The bank will that's use right. it. That's right. So one of my close friends works at a bank in Hamilton and she just uh, qualified a mortgage for a client who is not mine, um, who is an adult film star. Oh, wow. And so she had to review all of his financial information. No and kidding. And he is being paid. He's making pretty good money? He's a porn star. No kidding. He's he, literally a, a gentleman He's who's, probably well endowed. Then. And so like as soon as she was finished it, of course she wanted to let everyone know, like you'll never okay. guess. Well, they, I've, I've been asked a lot to be a porn star. Oh, have yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I was at the wine. I went at the gym and people were like, hey, you should be a... Well, you're down three and a half pounds. So That's like it, yeah. it's basically <laughs> a no brainer. But yeah, I think like um, it's very interesting because they don't think it's it's consistent income. No, because this guy's going to age unless he's like uh, Ron Jeremy. Like, I mean, Ron Jeremy was like a fat, ugly guy at the end. Like still sure. doing porn. Yeah, you but know? if you're selling uh what is that beach body, right? Yeah. Like can you get a mortgage selling beach body? And if you have the two year average, the answer is yes. If you made eighty thousand dollars. No, I think, you, I think year, don't you need more than two years? I think you need you know what? I think if you're in a kind of uh business that is that niche? That niche. I think you need I think mm-hmm. you need at least three years of of uh income to show that you're making that much money like i think my age is showing i don't know how the i don't know how posting to instagram makes people money so i don't know how that could be consistent or what it like pays. how long so so here's how here's how fast so you can build your instagram or your tiktok account to millions of people and you're making you know hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe even millions and yeah, you can get a mortgage, but you know how you know how fast that you can climb, you can fall you can just fall as fast right out the bottom. And like, where is that money coming from? Is it sponsorships? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, like you ever you go watch on TikTok, and, you, and all of a sudden you see these, you know, people that they do, and all of a sudden now they're promoting a uh, certain product mm-hmm. on there. And, and Maybelline and, is giving but, them, but yeah, you know what? But but, but the I'll tell you, the influencers have way more influence on the public than I think the uh commercials on tv because if you're following somebody Mm -hmm. right you are you like that person and i mean like everybody likes different actors and this and that that's why they always have uh celebrities um that are that are promoting different products but um but influencers they may have a couple million people and they start promoting a product it helps like so if you get 10 of those people Mm -hmm. and it works out to 20 million people yeah, I think it reaches a, a far greater amount of people than it does on, on well, television. I mean, don't we know that firsthand? The yeah. best thing we could have in our arsenal is testimonials, but we yeah. don't pay for those, right? right so to be right. a company that's sending out your new product. Remember we talked about the glasses, the the meta glasses? Yeah. And they sent like a thousand pairs to influencers. Yes, and yes. that's way cheaper than Ray-Ban making that's a right. commercial explaining Absolutely, it. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know how that income generates. Yeah, well, as long I've as they got it, income. I've as long as they a got, couple times. Yeah, sure. as long as they got income. You know what? We're just starting to, like on some YouTube stuff that we're doing, we're just starting to get close to that point where we have enough followers that YouTube's recognizing us as a little bit of an influencer. We're not there yet. Well, Rob, you added a new blonde to the page. So there you that's it's why gotta be good that's for why yeah. there you go there you go <laughs> it's, it's always the, it's always effect. it's always the blonde it hey, is we have to leave everybody but i want to tell you today is my eight-year wedding anniversary whoa it's a congratulations hey, you passed the seven year is that an itch itch yeah did you guys you guys survived it I mean, we might have been wounded. No, I, I yeah. tease you. No, we've always got something on the go to take our attention away from each there you other. Go. That's but no, it. it was a beautiful day like this. Eight years ago, we got married in downtown Toronto. Wow, good um, for you. Thank you. I was barefoot and pregnant. Oh, um, no kidding. In a dress from David's Bridal. Oh, wow. And we always joke uh, at, at 10 years, we'll have another wedding so that I can party this time. That's Because I was really left out of this. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Where did you, you get married? I got married, uh, the, the church was in uh, Niagara Falls, okay. and the reception was in Hamilton, on the Hamilton Mountain, and uh, yeah. Like yeah. up at Carmen's I or had, something? Yeah, I, I had a small wedding. Really? I that want, surprises me. No, my sisters had big, big weddings. Oh, my I would sis- have thought like a 400 Yeah, person. no, no, that's, that's my sisters. I had a small wedding, and uh, yeah, no, it was just... Uh, Us two, 80 yeah, people. Yeah, no, I had a... I don't. I, I I think it was 160 people. It could be 170, 150. I I can't. But I I'm gonna go in between. It's 160, and um, yeah. No, it was a great wedding. Um, 
uh, about 160 people, and uh, everybody in, in there kind of knew each other. There was no, like, strangers. Uh, and my sister got married earlier that year in May. We got married in October. And my mom was like, well, we got to invite these people. I go, no, 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 no. And uh, They already got a party. Yeah, they already, yeah. Family. Yeah. So Did they, you have a band? Uh, no, we, uh, we, had, uh, we had a DJ. Yeah? Yeah, we had a DJ. Did you guys have a band? We had a DJ, but we got married at a restaurant. Right. And so this is like the coolest part, and I'll leave you with this one. So it's like midnight, okay? Everyone's coming in and out. They're smoking. They're doing whatever, hanging out front of Sassafras in in downtown Toronto. Okay. And there is a we've rented the entire establishment. Right. But there's a bistro to the side. Right. Which is still working. And we hear like piano playing. Right. So a couple of people poke their head in. Is Kiefer Sutherland there for a midnight nightcap playing piano for all the people at Sassafras Bar? So any of the nicotine addicts at my wedding got to have like a private. Kiefer Sutherland no concert. Kidding. No kidding. Yeah. So no, no Sassafras mm-hmm. is still there today. Yes. That, uh, that's what I thought because yes. I thought I recognized but that. But they painted it. It used to be the most brilliant Is that yellow. Yorkdale? Yes, it is. It's right on the corner there. No, Yorkville. Yorkville. It's in Yorkville. Yeah. That's right. I think um, I've, eat, uh, th- I, I've eaten at that restaurant. Right on the corner. It's yes, special. I, I've been there. I've been there. That's amazing. And the reason we picked it was because they already had flowers on the table and they made the food to order. So I was like, this is the easy. I'm not a, I didn't want to plan a wedding. This that, was very straightforward and simple. And it, it, was, was it, it was the first time, I think this is at Sassaraz, is the first time I had this, and, and it was probably the only time. Uh, Fragua? Is that the right way? Do you oh, know what that is? Foie gras? Yes. Of I, course. I go, what, what is this? I'm eating it. What is this? And I'm like, yeah, this tastes good, pretty good. And then I find out after. It's chicken liver. It's pate. You don't eat pate? Ah, that is my five year old's favorite I'm, food. I am the guy that grow, I grew up. I like pasta. Pasta. You'll ve- eat veal, but you won't eat foie gras. I, well, I, pff, I anything with liver. I'm like, I, I'm just <laughs> thinking about it. I won't. I don't know. I won't. Like, I mean, like, I if I'm eating something, it tastes good. And if it's something that I, if I, if you tell me it's something like, you know, chicken feet or, uh-huh. or that, I, I'll, I'll get grossed out. I, it, I just, I don't, I haven't eaten liver in my life, and I, that's the only thing I've eaten liver. So they mixed it up and mashed it up with all with uh, garlic and, and everything else that you can't actually taste the liver. Yep. And but you put it on yeah. a cracker. Yeah, and, and stuff like that. But I, uh, but I won't. T- I'm not. In, I'm not into this. You know, this crazy expensive uh, meals and stuff that people go to because they can say they had that. I'm more like steak, pasta. Chicken, veal, veal parm, sandwich. veal parm. Like I'm simple. I'm not into this high. Like you know, oh, I just had some frog. Wow, uh, <laughs> screw, well, screw that. For the record, you can buy it at No Frills uh, for four dollars in a package. Okay, so and um, that's I, what I my didn't even know they sold that. I thought it was something at a restaurant you only get. Yeah, I'm so, sure there was a fancier so, variant. Well, we should go there for lunch one day. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. So, thanks Always. again. Everybody, thank you for listening. Hey, like, follow, and share. Trust me, it, uh, you know, listen to what we have to say. We talk a little bit about real estate. It's not just real estate. Tell us what you want to hear about. Yeah, send us messages. Tell us what you want to hear. Thanks for uh, listening.